So we're doing linear programming again. Uh, we're going to use something called the geometric approach along with a parallel line rule. Uh, it's just going to make our life a little bit easier in terms of finding the maximum or finding the minimum uh, from our feasible region. So here's, here's our little question here. We've got an objective function of p equals 50x plus 20y. And we have constraints of y is greater than 0, x is less than or equal to 20, 2x plus y is less than or equal to 20, and 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 7. So if I graph those constraints, they end up looking like this. So um, we have a feasible region here. And you know from a previous video that the maximum and the minimum will exist at this point here, at this point here, at this point here, or at this point here. So there are four options. Now, if there's more constraints, there's going to be more, um, more points. So if you had like 20 points because you had so many uh, constraints, so many straight lines, that's going to take ages to put in each of those values. So there should be a faster way, and there is. The trick is that the, is that the objective function's gradient can tell us something about the maximum and the minimum. So let's take a look at how to do that. Step one is to find the gradient of the objective function. So here's my objective function, and I need, need to rearrange it to make y the subject. So that's going to be 20y equals uh, p minus 50x. Uh, and then that's going to be y equals, I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit, negative 50x over 20 uh, plus p over 20. Uh, and then just to simplify this a little bit, negative 5x over 2 plus p over 20. So now that we've got y being the subject, we can see that the it's y equals mx plus c. Now, this gradient is negative 5 over 2. So, m equals negative 5 over 2. That gradient's important. You might be wondering about the p-value here. p is just a, it's a constant, it's a number. Um, so we can just represent, this is going to be our y-intercept. We don't know what the p is, it can change depending on, on things, but it's not really going to have a bearing on, on this particular bit. All we need to know is that the gradient is negative 5 on 2. So step 2 really here is to sub any value for p, anything you feel like, and then graphing it. So probably the simplest thing is to sub 0 for p. So if I do that, I'm going to end up with y equals negative 5x on 2 plus 0 over 20. So I've got this very, very straightforward function, y equals negative 5x on 2, and then I'm going to graph it over the top of my feasible region. So y equals negative 5x over 2. y equals negative 5x over 2, sorry, I just stuffed that up. And you can see we have a line here. Now, if we shifted that line up to our feasible region, the first dot it touches will be the maximum or the minimum. I'm not sure which. And if I keep moving it through my feasible region, the last dot it touches will be either the maximum or the minimum. So let me show you what I mean by that. So what I've done here is create a slider here at p equals 0, and that slides all the way up to 200. And then I'm going to alter this so that it's not y equals negative 2.5x plus 0, but plus p over 20. Okay, let's see what happens when I shift that p value. You can see it shifting, shifting up, 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 up. 
need a larger p-value. Okay, let's shift it up more. Okay, and you can see the first dot it's going to touch is this dot here, 6.71, 6.57. So that's either going to be our maximum or our minimum. Now as I push through, the last dot it touches is that dot, and that's either going to be our maximum or our minimum, 20 and 26.5. So let's take a little picture of this, and then we can move forward from there. So this was our original question. We found the gradient of the objective function, m equals negative 5 on 2. We drew a line up against our feasible region. And then we saw that when we moved our line through our feasible region by changing that value of p, the first dot it touches was this one, and the last dot it touches was that one over there. So there are our two uh, suspects for being the maximum and the minimum. Now we just need to sub them into our equation to find out which one's the maximum and which one's the minimum. First I'm going to sub that point in. And next up I'm going to sub in that point over there. 1, 5, 3, 8. So, very, very clear here, this is a big number, so it's the maximum, and this is a small number, it's the minimum. So there's the minimum, and there's the maximum. Now, be careful, you might be looking at this and going, well, of course this was going to be the minimum, it's the lowest value, of course this was going to be the maximum, it's the highest value. That's got nothing to do with it. If our... Um, constraint, if our uh, equation, sorry, our objective function was different, one of those could have been the maximum and one of those could have been the, the minimum. So be very, very wary of believing that. That's not the truth at all. Okay, there is our geometric approach to linear programming. It, it allows us a little more quickly to find the maximum and the minimum, particularly when these dots start to add up. Not 4, but 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever it might be. Alright, uh, give it a try.